Hi there, I'm back. Oh my god, it's been so long, I missed all of you. Yes, I've responded to all the emails I've received, and yes, I will not stop playing the game called Football Manager. <laughs> so what have I been up to? Some of you know that I have a passion to make a difference in people's lives. So over the last few months, I've been traveling to the US. Uh, next month, I return there before heading off to Italy and then to Australia. So I've been traveling a lot. I've set up a new company which aims to help people achieve more of in life and in work. 80% of employees are feeling disengaged at work. So we help companies improve systems and we also coach them achieve their greater goals and help them live better lives. We've also started working with some non-profit organizations where we help support the activities focused on high-risk families that are near or in the poverty zone. We coach, we train, we speak publicly about leadership, emotional intelligence, achieving fulfillment, wellness, and we've even helped people overcome phobias and prepare them for those critical interviews that they want to, you know, they want to get that job and so we go in. I've even coached a taxi driver in the US. I was actually in a... Uh, met this Uber driver and I coached him for 30 minutes because he had problems getting to move to his dream job. So after 30 minutes, he hugged me of all the people, of all the strange things in the world. It was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. So something had to give as I embarked on this new adventure of mine. Um, unfortunately, it had to be FM. So I stopped playing FM for a while. And then one day, you know, I discovered the new Assassin's Creed trailer, the one with Michael Fassbender. And then I went like, okay, you know, this is cool. So as, as I was about to pick up my Assassin's Creed Black Flag game, I decided, hey, hang on a minute. I've got Football Manager. I still have my Kingstonian Diaries and my Torino safe. And I have to return to that. So here I am, I'm back and I'm going to return with the Kingstonian safe. If you want to find out more, please go down to our website. It's called scopesitecoach.com. You can check out my blog. It's just started. I've just started all this stuff out. And I plan to try and juggle two things at the same time. Football manager my, and my new company. So a quick summary of what happened last season. Uh, we won the championship. I'm very happy with that. Though I can't even recall how we played. Uh, we used a 4-4-2 and a 4-1-2-3 last season. And this season, we're going to be going through our team with a fine-tooth comb. I've forgotten how some of these players played. Uh, I can remember to some extent, basically, I will, I, since I've been playing for so long, I will look at appearances. Those players who have a high appearance, likely these were my core players. And those guys who had low appearances, well, they probably weren't that important and they didn't play well enough to war warrant um, them being selected for next season. So for next season, I'm going to have to look at the attributes again and compare them to other teams around the league and to make sure that we have the right kind of setup for us to play well in the conference. So a new season is going to start. And before I begin a new season, I want to do a quick comparison to see what the gap is going to be between my team and the rest of the league. So the way I started is actually I'm going to start looking at, since we are the champions, how do we compare to the rest of the league in the conference itself? As far as the Conference South is concerned, we are not one of the best teams. In terms of finishing, we are definitely the best uh, in hitting and finishing and acceleration. We're not bad in attack. In midfield, definitely below average. We're good at tackling, winning the ball in midfield. And one of the hallmarks of our game was the number of tackles we threw into midfield. So we win the ball in midfield quite a lot. However, in terms of passing and finishing and vision, we'll need to find players who can string a lot more passes together. In terms of defense, definitely we are lucky. So it's our screen and midfielders have been doing a lot of the work for us. So we'll have to strengthen our defenders this season. So priority, get a few more decent defenders. And our goalkeeper is one of the best in the league. So definitely we are happy with the situation. But going forward for next season, we have to look at the tactics that we want to use. And then after that, you know, fit in the right players. Uh, I'm going to still depend on my 4-4-2 and I'm going to adapt it for a counter or in an attacking system. I'm also going to be looking at a 4-1-2-3 or whatever you want to call it. So 4-3-3 um, and, and use that as well. Finally, the 4 3 When I make any kind of a system like that, when I'm looking at my players, I want the first prior priority of mine is to find three central midfielders that can play in this position. So if I have, if I can find three, it covers all the systems I want to use. Because then I'm covered. So the 4 3 3 and the 4 3 1 2, they're very, very compatible systems. 
So for next season, we have to find defenders. Looks like Doyle, Wood, Taylor. Taylor is, I'm going to keep him. Um, the rest of the defenders, we have to find some defenders that are good enough for our league. So it's pre-season time. One of the things I do is I go through all my all my known players. So that's fine because um, a lot of these players are in my radar. But chances are this is going to happen. So if I go to like a player like Daryl Knights, I'm going to see all this. And... Um, in this particular case, then, I'm looking for... I know I'm looking for three midfielders. So I add in, like, average rating and appearances. Because this information will be available. And first thing I do is I look at average rating. Like, this guy called Leo Mazzon has got an average rating of 8.8. .8, although when he played one... He made only one appearance. So, wow. With that kind, I have to send a scout to find out more about him. So that's what I do. So I send scouts out in preseason, set them up for a few weeks and tell them, you know, go go find out a bit more about the players. And um, since I'm looking for central midfielders, I'll do this then. And then I do this. And I pick the players who I think are going to fit into my style of play. And then I ask my scouts to scout them out so like this and then I get scouts get assign a scout from the scouting pool from two weeks and they will go out and scout these eight players same thing for my defenders I'll do the same thing for them. so I'm looking for all those players on non-contracts because if you click on any one of these players you'll find out you can sign them right okay so these are either under 21s they don't have a contract but you know you might as well just scout them I, I can't get if you want um, unattached players, the list becomes shorter. And these are players you can also scout, so I can do this. I get them scouted. The scouting pool for two weeks and scout reports will come in. Then I go to my um, non-contract players. So these guys are, don't have a contract, so you can just sign them if you want, if you find that these guys are half decent. So again, average rating 7.34, I go to the whole group, right click, and assign a scout from the scouting pool for two weeks. I don't have a lot of scouts, so it's probably going to take a really long time. So I know what I'm looking for, I'm looking for players. Uh, they can fit into my style of play and this is in pre-season so there's plenty of time and chances are we'll have to re-scout them again two weeks may just give me it i want to get as i want to find these players as quickly as i can uh, and so in pre-season that's what i'm actually doing uh, some people might ask me questions like finances how do you do with finances i think in conference health i don't really care i mean i may have a transfer budget of ten thousand, which is quite a luxury considering the fact that uh, I basically work on a shoestring budget uh, I don't I always work well within my wage budget and I do my best to win as many games and stay in as many competitions as possible because there aren't a lot of ways for you to make a lot of money so I just try my best to keep my head above water stay within budget keep a tight ship uh, outperform and hopefully people want to buy my place so far nobody has wanted to buy my place so after two weeks um, the scout finishes their scouting and uh, we will have something that's a bit more narrow we will have some confirmation some numbers will be confirmed most of them will have narrowed down and I will have to make a decision and uh, this is the decision I'm faced with. I can go longer, like four weeks, but by then a lot of the players get snapped up. So a lot of them have to be on gut feel. I have to look at my stats, the attributes that I'm interested in, and then make a decision. I know I need midfielders who can tackle, who can pass, and who have a decent bit of acceleration. So he only has two, so he's out. So that's how I make decisions really quickly because I need them to be able to tackle, pass, and have some you know some acceleration okay as far as transfers are concerned we've managed to get some players into the club we've brought in a lot of free transfers uh we've let quite a few players go um actually there are more than these number there's some more players are leaving very soon and um, i didn't extend the contract of a few favorites of mine like curtis mcdonald i told them let them go because they weren't really performing very well um, in terms of these players, I half of them are desperation signings because we need to strengthen and um, I basically want to 
I would think anybody who can tackle in midfield. So you can see like even my fullbacks, I needed to get a decent fullback on the right. And um, in this, but in his particular case, somebody else was making an offer. So I just looked at his average range and I decided, okay, I'm just going to take him. For conference sites, I would concentrate on free transfers. I wouldn't bother about paying any kind of transfer fee for a player. Uh, use that to actually expand the squad. You know, if, you, if you're going to get more players in, um, there are going to be lots of players available on free transfers. So I spend most of my time just finding out the, who the players are on free transfers. As far as training is concerned, the players only last like a season at best, maybe even two if you're lucky. So even training them is a waste of time. So I just get... I just put them on uh, fitness in pre-season and balance for the whole season. For conference sites, I never care. Until they get into at least championship. Um, the championship, yeah. That's may maybe then I'll start worrying about a training academy and uh, put getting in the right coaches. But before then, nah. Just focus on getting in the right players on free transfers and getting up, getting yourself promoted. So our pre-season form wasn't very good. We lost Four matches, only won two. The ones I arranged, basically we lost to teams that we were supposed to win. I was trying things out and trying players out. Didn't really work out. Um, in training, I've gone back to balanced. And um, in terms of my tactics, I was hoping to use the... I was hoping... In terms of my tactics, I was hoping to use this. But unfortunately, I've put players injured. So I'll have to switch to the 4-4-2. Four, four, or maybe even the 4 3 one two. I think I might go with the 4 3 one too, because I might have enough players with this. Hollingsworth, Fonko, Cornhill, yeah, we'll go with the 4 3 one too, because I actually have the players for the system. Uh, we have a... Uh, and uh, Sam Austin will play ahead of Rory Williams. So we've got Sam Austin, Barbos, Gomez, Pico, Cornell. What's really shocking for me is that we are not playing with the top two scorers from last season in the lineup. Last season, Rory Williams and um, Emma O'Connor were the top two scorers. They're on the bench right now because the system I'm playing with does not suit them. So we're going to go counter for this and... Uh, flexible instructions for them will be I'm going to clear this right now and um, we're going to go narrow fairly narrow with the system use the offside trap play out a defense look for overlap whip the crosses into the box and um, that should be fine prevention of paper distribution okay here we are the match is about to start submitting the team wow okay come Let's do well, boys. And we're off. First match of the season. I have no clue how well we are going to play. So we're going to make sure that we try to defend. Already I'm seeing players come down the flanks. And I'm just hoping that we have enough uh, defensive presence to close them down. Farman with the goal kick. Oh, it's gone right through. Oh, good. The players did well enough to close that chance down. So far, possession is fairly even. Uh, we're doing okay, I guess. Kanye, wasn't hoping to see him start, but okay. Elvis Putnam, so star goalkeeper. The man that helped us get promoted. Oh, what a ball from him. Gomez Pico, what can you do? Hollingsworth out wide to Kanye. Kanye drops in across. Does he drop in across? He does. Gomez Pico finds Austin. Austin is offside. Mm. Farman. Okay, we've got enough numbers in midfield, but they're not doing enough to get close the chances down. So we might have to think about bringing somebody else in. But we don't have any other central midfielders to bring in. Ray, Harry, except for Jack Rea. Let's look at Jack Rea. Tackling 9, Anticipation 7, uh, Passing 14, maybe. Jumping Reach Pace 9, okay. Compare him to Mr. Fong Cook. 11, Tackling, Passing 10, Determination 8, Off the Ball 3, Hopeless. Okay, anticipation 4, so his positioning and Anticipation are a problem. Alright boys, they're doing well. Okay, start the second half. Not a bad start to the first half. Our yeah, first season against Lincoln. Who are, I mean, they, sh 
they've been in the conference for a while, so. Oh no, it's a oh no, it's a goal. They've scored. Lincoln City have taken the lead. <laughs> oh goodness! Just when I was hoping that we would do okay, we have now conceded a goal. That's it. Time for us to do something different. Okay, go to advanced tactics. Attack, attack. You're going wing back on attack. We're gonna go all mental now. Wing back on attack. You guys are gonna be ball winning midfielders on. Uh, no, 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 support. Ball winning midfielder on support. Let's, let's do something different. Instructions, play out of defense, look for overlap. Okay, this should be fine. And we're going to go attacking. Confirm changes. Diagne. Hearn, Jacobs, back to Diagne. Oh, won the wall back but they couldn't do anything with it Hearn through to Robinson Robinson oh he's blocked by Wood Keaton Wood another free kick a corner sorry Bauer cleared Cornhill boots the ball out our first our first game of the season against Lincoln Kingstonians are a goal down alright make a substitution Rory Williams or Palayo Joe for Mark Muspeth. The substitution Jack Rea for uh, Max Cornhill. Okay. All three. I'm throwing all three dice. Can the boys get a point? Can they get themselves back into the game? We've made three changes. We've gone a lot more attacking. Yes, Hollingsworth. Babos, no. You can see moments of magic coming from the boys, but they still haven't got their act together yet. Osler does well. Rhea gets to the ball first, finds Babos. Babos, oh, Hollingsworth with the ball. What can he do? Plays it through. Babos couldn't do anything with it. Again, and Dyer gets to the ball ahead of Fonkuk. It's Keaton Wood and uh, Kanye. Kanye plays it back to Putnans. We're still trying to get ourselves back into this match. Babos shoots from... Oh, and Babos scores a brilliant equaliser. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay, King Stodius at pool level. Yes. Austin heading it down. Babos. And I was thinking he was playing like crap. Oh, man. He's, what a sweet shot from there. Well, we didn't deserve that, but okay. Alright, I'll take it. We've made three substitutions. All three players have come up and delivered a lot better than the players that were on. Dino. Oh yes, thank you very much. Trilling second half. Yes, we've gotten ourselves a point. We were underdogs and we managed to come away with a point. I really thought we'd get beaten. We proved them wrong. And that's a good start to our little adventure in the one Rama conference coming back from a goal down to get a point our next match is going to be against Oxford City Kingstonians have rescued a late draw okay so now it's time for our second match and um, well we've learned one thing from the last match the tactic wasn't perfect so we're gonna try using them as ball winning midfielders and also, we realized that some players weren't playing as well. Nisbeth did not have a very good game. I'll push Nisbeth out to... He's actually supposed to be a fullback, but... Alright, so Nisbeth didn't play very well. Dino played a lot better, so we'll leave uh, Dino there. Nisbeth will be removed, and we will put Osler there. Okay, so who else can play in that position? I need somebody who can tackle and pass the ball. Uh, maybe I'll put Jack Rear here. This is like... Hoping. Okay, so Jack Rear, Cornhill. Jack Rear played well, so he'll start. Up front, we will still use um, the combination of Austin and Barbos. Gomez Pico did not have a very good game in that position, so we'll have to try someone else. So our second match is going to be against Oxford. Um, got some one or two new players introduced into the team. I'm going to go attacking straight away, we're not going to waste any time. Uh, in terms of the tactics, we're going to use them as wingbacks on attack. 
wing back on attack. All right, and uh, we have uh, we have had to play, put players in. Uh, those who didn't play so well in the last game, I'm not putting them in. Uh, Emmett O'Connor is back from injury, but he's in the uh, four one two three. Osler is here as well. Uh, Osler came Osler came on to play quite well, uh, and Jake Campton and Palio Gomez. He, here we are. We're off against uh, Oxford City, we're playing a rather attacking system. Buttons, goal kick, off to Babos, Wood, drops one right behind the line for Babos to... <laughs> okay, Babos, you are definitely making me sit up and take a notice of him. Oh, no, it's a corner. Oh, we're not very good at this. <laughs> Kingstonians are a goal out again. Hmm, set pieces are my weakness. I don't know, watch them highlights. Well, unfortunately for us, we conceded a goal to a set piece. But it's not the end of the world. I still have faith in my team. Kanye, oh yeah, why is he still playing? <laughs> oh, in a cross to Aston! Yes, that's why he's playing. See, I want to take Kanye off, and he keeps doing this. So Kanye drops a perfect cross for Austin. Yep, probably hurt me. I was like thinking, why does he play? Kanye with a great, great cross. Right into the danger zone. Sam Austin, ah, couldn't miss from there. Or oh, he'd be on the selling block. We're back level. Well, we're playing definitely the better football. Now We conceded a goal early to a set piece, so I shouldn't be beating my head over because of that hmm not good 6.5 and he's dropping like a rock we'll have to give this boys a shelling in half time 6.4 now that's not looking good Dino to Bayabuz back to Dino 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 it's almost in Charlie Day shoots oh ho. these boys are having a bit of fun Okay. Ah, wow, they are able to launch a counter. Crawford with the ball. He looks up, looks for a support. Reared as well. Rushing in uh, to play his role defensively. Okay. All right, boys, come on. Calm. I am not happy with your performance out there. I know you guys can do a lot better. If you, if you have lost confidence, you shouldn't be playing for me. Keaton Wood. Kanye. Honestly, I don't really care about their mood swings. It's a numbers game. Hollingsworth, maybe, but Emma O'Connor is not a tackler, but Joe Osler is. Okay, make substitution. I think Joe Osler can play in that position if I move people around. Uh, no, I can't even move him around, so that's it. We're stuck with these players. I don't have another. I need to make sure that in my next game, I have a midfielder who can play. Come off the bench. Griffiths, Donovan. Oh, you beauty. Keatonwood does well again. Rhea is gonna. It looks like he's uh you know stamping his mark in midfield. Come on, Rhea. Does well again. Lamp. Perf providing the perfect screen for midfield. Dino again to Day. Day back to Cornhill. Cornhill out wide to Dino who can cross early. No, he doesn't cross early. He crosses late. Gets to Barbos. Dino is inside the box. Shoots and scores. Dino. Dino. Has scored. King Stories have come back from a goal down. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yippity. Dino, the Romanian. I signed him. He's one of those players I signed without looking totally at his attributes. He went like, I like his name. Seriously, that's how I play the game. Yeah, Mihai Dino. Sounds like a cool name. So, that's the first thing. But I signed Barbos for exactly the same reason. Sam Austin, I signed him because he reminds me of that bionic man called Steve Austin. So, okay, look, this is if this logic is my logic. Alright, so they have certain attributes, but if they can bring some memories into my game and make me have fun, yeah, I do. 
yeah, I mean, Sam Austin, Steve Austin, or whatever Austin this guy is, he's got quite high ratings of finishing. So if he gets the ball into the box at the right time, yeah, he, he can score. And the boys have scored another goal. It's 3 1. Okay, all right. We're on full attack mode and we're doing quite well. Um, but we can't lose the plot, can we? Hana to Pifare. Hana. I, you see, I don't sign players who are called Hana because I don't want them to create chances. I don't want Hannah Barbara, Hannah Barbara, or Hannah. I have problems. Robinson, corner, we're hopeless at set pieces. Austin gets to the ball. Austin can give it to Babos. Babos holds the ball up, looks up for support, finds it in the onrushing players, but Azamendi gets to the ball first. And Joe Oslo will come on for Mr. Keaton Wood, who's had a good game. And uh, yes, we'll give uh, Palayo Gomez a chance. No, 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 no. Okay, that's it. That's enough. Well, it's gonna be over any moment now. Donovan. Oh, who's that? This should be the Dino. Dino, oh, Dino is all over. Pifare. Griffiths, well, boys, you can pass the ball, give it back to us, you know. It's, yeah, it's full time. 3 1. I am really pre pleased with how well we've played this match. 4 3 1 2, attacking, slight modifications. And we've given Oxford City a right old thrashing. So, a win and a draw. Not a bad start to our first two matches of the season, leaving us. Four points, two points behind. Newington, Grimsby, Macclesfield, Eastley, and yeah, Eastley. Yeah, I like this start. Interestingly, I'm happy, and um, we're gonna keep this going because I, whenever I get promoted, you know, newly promoted side, my goal is always very simple. I have to win. I have to draw as many as matches as I can, and that's logical, right? So I work. Um, for a newly promoted size, my first priority is always not to lose. The more draws I get, that uh, usually pulls me out of any relegation trouble. And then after that, I try to win as many home matches as I can. And typically, you will see a ratio of about nearly 50-50 wins and losses, uh, wins and draws. And that usually is enough for me to at least end up in the promotion spots. So we've had a pretty decent season. As far as training is concerned, I'm going to stick to my plan. My plan is pretty straightforward. Uh, in terms of training, everybody's doing like the basic stuff that they're supposed to do. And nothing too fancy. No preferred moves. I'm not going to bother with this because uh, half the players are not going to be around for their preferred moves to take kick in because they probably won't be around next season. And um, as far as my tactics are concerned, I'll run through these tactics one more time. So here I have my 4 3 one two. What's with the system? Remember, I turned these guys into wing backs in one match. So I went all Harakiri on the team. And what are my instructions? Well, they're the same for both the wing backs. Pass it shorter, stay wider. The whole goal is for me to keep possession. And then these guys will get up. As long as they pass it shorter to these guys, because they have got the uh, get further forward, and they are going to be doing overlapping runs, they will always try get up into these positions to cross. And you've seen some some of the crosses coming from Dino and Kanye. As far as my centre-backs are concerned, nothing different. As far as Putney's is concerned, nothing different. And what about my midfielders? Dribble less is always going to be something that I want them to do. I don't want them to run with the ball too much because they are not good on the ball. Now, one of the reasons why I was hesitant about using ball-winning midfielders was because they tackle harder and they close out much more, which means they may go missing. So I have to really pay attention to this in a match. Up front here, AMC is moving through channels, close out much more. They're playing with the final third closing down. Same thing with uh, these guys, except he does a lot more. He tackles harder, he does more direct passes, moves into channels and close down much more. This guy does nothing else. I have one of my forwards who doesn't close down much more. So he's like the free man. So he's going to have a chance to get to the ball. And he doesn't do any of the defensive work up front. 
So what about my team instructions? Team instructions, they're pretty basic, always the same. Um, I make sure that we are playing on flexible counter. You know, this is how I start counter. If I want to go attacking, I just go attacking and that's it. All right, so that's uh, me 4312. What about this system? This system, same thing. I'll go from counter to attacking without making too many changes. My inside forwards have been told to mark tighter. Interestingly enough, why have I done this? Because chances are when they drop back, they'll be closer on the shoulder of the fullbacks. More direct passes, close down much more, and these are because I want them to launch direct. I don't want them to play short passes when they're in the final third. I want them to create havoc because the rest of the team is playing with mixed passing. In midfield, I will close down more, slightly more because the DLP doesn't close down a hell of a lot. Uh, this actually makes him close down a bit more and encourages him to play a more attacking game. So these two guys have been told to close down much more, pass it shorter. The Hollingsworth's job is very simple. He's a link man between all these three. So he has to pass it shorter. Shorter would mean he's going to be looking for either Cornhill or if the um, Infosite forwards, you know, they come in to play Alternatively, drop it back for Rhea who will string passes around the park. Who has more direct passes? And in fullbacks, uh, these two fullbacks, I don't need them to be wingbacks. Why? Because this space is already occupied. So why would I want them to like, you know, become monsters running the then I, I just I might in certain games, but for now I won't try that just yet. But if the wingbacks work, maybe. But still it's low priority for me. This is supposed to be my defensive counter-attacking system where these guys get into goal-scoring positions. So stay wider, and this guy is staying wider. Defenders, nothing different. There's no need, there's no changes here. Again here, no changes here. Okay, what about Rocky Bullwinkle, my 4-4-2? Slightly different. Distribute over opposition defense. This is a very much a Leicester system. I'm using the Leicester setup here. This is a um, slight modification of the Leicester system, but plays along the same lines. Dribble more, no changes to this. He's a he plays as a winger. This guy plays as a wide midfielder. He's supposed to sit narrow. This is the um uh Mares role. So he will cut inside and come in late and support these guys because he's got cut inside and cross less often. This guy's playing as a deep he plays as a deep line playmaker and this guy's supposed to be the Kante role, you know. Um I would probably um include close down much more. For him so that he does more of the Kante thing <laughs> and uh, dribble more he en ends up attacking and charging into the box moves into channels and closes down much more back line sit narrow this guy stays wider so this guy will cut inside forming like something like a three in defense and this guy will actually stay wider and hopefully overlap so yeah this is me 442 that I was using to such effect last season and that's basically it in terms of the team instructions i tend to mess with this a bit so yeah sometimes i will change to narrow um you'll have to watch some of the games to see what i do i i can't it's very situational well that's basically my prep work for the new season done we're off to a good start i have some systems i can play basically one of these basically three which i'm reasonably okay with and i hope it's clarified some of the questions you might have if you have any other questions please drop me a note at bustanet my twitter handle or you can find me drop me a note at addicted to fm.com my name is Rashidi or Daljit, whichever one if you know me. My real name is Daljit, yes, and I'm from Singapore. Please uh, drop me a note if you have any questions and I'll try and get back to you. Once again, I apologize for disappearing for so long, but I had things to do um, and lots of things to finish. And I'm hoping that I get a chance to play FM again till we catch up with each other again. Uh, stand by for the next episode of The Kingstonians and yes, Torino is also coming back. Bye-bye.